But I'm here to welcome you to our Spring uh, Dementia Summit 2023. My name is Pat Zook. I'm a family practice doctor. And I'm really here first to introduce our MC, uh, Dr. Kim Jaden, who's here. Dr. Tackle is also here. Uh, 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 both of them are um, former partners at the medical group, family doctors, and they're gonna help with the questions. So when you submit your questions, we'll try to entertain each of them. Those that we don't get to, we'll try to answer after the fact, as long as you uh, give us some information. Dr. Jaden is um, uh, a family doctor, and I'll introduce her in a minute, but before that, I want to introduce each of our staff people that we have. So if you look on the, your screen, you'll see from left to right, um, we have uh, two great care navigator educators, and some of you have met them. Tammy Kolbinger, uh, they're uh, care navigators educators, I should say. Christina Rodriguez, next to her. We have uh, Christina Wojski, she's a K. Christina, and we have two great volunteers, you know, Kay DeFries, and then uh, Tammy Line, who's helping with our production here today. So without our great staff, we wouldn't be where we are today, and we have a great culture where we work. So um, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Kim Jaden, who will uh, take over here. She is um, Medical Director of Community Health for Central Care. She's a family doctor of 24 years, and uh, you'd never know that looking at her. Um, and uh, she, uh, along the way, got a master's in public health. So she is really into public health and primary care. All her patients just love her. They all think that they're the only patient she has. Uh, and so I'd like you to welcome the 2019 Minnesota Family Physician of the Year, Kim James. Thank you, Pat. I'm here to do the logistics this morning. So first of all, welcome. Thank you all for being here this morning. Um, from a public health standpoint, dementia is preventable. We don't talk about it enough. We don't think about it enough. I like to say that nobody wants to pay for studies on blueberries, right? They only want to study medications. And so um, things like exercise and nutrition and the, the really where we live, work, and play, we don't study enough. Um, and then from a primary care standpoint, from a family doctor standpoint, neurologist standpoint, it affects all of your body, right? Your entire body is affected by this disease. And so um, having uh, educating yourself, educating your family members, and sometimes you have to educate your doctor. <laughs> So, do not consider anything that we say here today to be medical advice. Do not change your care plan without first discussing it with your clinician. While we appreciate the support of sponsors, grant makers, and donors, opinions expressed here today are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily supported by our sponsors, grant makers, or donors. The agenda this morning. So we are doing our welcome and keynote now. We will have a conversation about the uh, resource center model of care. Then we will have just a short little break and then we will talk about nutrition advances for brain health as you're eating your fruity pebbles at home. <laughs> and then we're gonna have about a half an hour break during that time, we really encourage you to visit our exhibitors, uh, which will be in the room across the hall. Um. And, um, and then we'll have you back here at 11.45 for our last conversation, which is gonna be about risk factors. So with that, I don't know if you all know Dr. Zook, but he's been a family doctor here in St. Cloud for a few years. He retired in 2017 and at that time went on to found the Dementia Resource Center. He's been working to increase awareness of dementia even before he retired uh, by starting this conference about 10 years ago. And his message is a message of hope. Dementia can be treated. Its progress can be slowed. Individuals, families, and communities 
can live with improved symptoms and have a better quality of life. So with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Pat Zook, my excellent friend and genius. Thank you, Kim. So um, I want to bring you a, a message of hope, and I want that to be kind of our keynote message here today. So uh, we've been working with dementia, as Kim said, uh, several years. We've seen almost 200 people at our Dementia Resource Center clinic, and we've learned so much from our clients. And we've uh, been doing nonstop research into the problem of community response to dementia. And we think there's a good strategy that we can do, but what we know is we can't do it ourselves. We need the whole community. You've all heard the phrase, it takes a community to raise a child. Well, what about the other end of life spectrum? It takes a community to help us who are over age 65 and dealing with complex medical issues like dementia. So our idea several years ago was to have meetings uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the area, and we drew people from well outside of St. Cloud, about 80 people, professionals, doctors, nurses, social workers, teachers, interested parties. And we were looking at what is insufficient about our dementia management system globally as a community. And we found many gaps in care. And these gaps aren't just what happens in the doctor's office, what prescriptions and so forth. No, it's, it's way bigger than that. But what we found was the folks down, uh, down the hall there, the exhibitors who have dementia resources, uh, who have businesses that speak to the needs of families, dealing with dementia, they weren't being found. They weren't getting the referrals that they needed to do good dementia care. So one thing led to another, but we came up with the concept of a center of excellence. Um, my friend, Dr. Nick Grader, I remember Nick back in the St. Cloud Medical Group, he and I both came to St. Cloud on July 1st, 1977. And Nick started off as an internist, family doctor, both boarded and eventually turned to oncology. And I remember helping your nurse start IVs back in the medical group just down the road here uh, years ago. But uh, a center of excellence like the Coburn's Cancer Center has a special place in complex medical issues like oncology and all the related hematology and other services. So we wanted to do something similar, a center of excellence for dementia management and care. And that's kind of what we're doing. What we've found is new things don't come into medicine quickly. There was a doctor or two in, I believe it was Australia, who came up with the idea that a germ, Helicobacter pylori, was the cause of 80% of ulcers. Well, that doctor and his colleagues were practically drummed out of medicine because no one could believe that a bacteria could cause ulcers. But after 15 years of being shunned and uh, dispensed with by the medical uh, establishment, everyone else started to get the same results and they realized he was right all along, 15 years. So if it takes 15 years to get a new concept into daily care on the front line where these two have worked, um, those of us who are anxious to get the results don't have 15 years if we're already 65 and older. So um, in medicine, when they do research, they like to talk about evidence-based medicine, that what you do is based on evidence. And I get it that NASA has a checklist where you rigidly follow before launch. You have a rigid, that, so you never mess up. You have that. And I get that. But when there are new innovative things like the H. pylori causing ulcers, I think we need to open up and accept new things, especially if there's no hazards or consequences that are negative as a result. So what we do is quite different from the usual um, medical visits. We center our um, assessments and our evaluation of patients on dementia risk factors. And that's not fancy like a spec scan or an FDG glucose uptake scan of your brain or an MRI. 
Um, and we talked nutrition. And in medical school, we didn't learn anything about nutrition. We'll have a whole talk on that in a little bit. But if we can just get society and the powers that be, meaning the people who pay the bills, the insurance companies and Medicare, to value the things that we know now know work for dementia, why don't we pay for that instead of a $56,000 a year medication that requires four intravenous infusions, four MRIs, because it has a 40% chance of shrinking your brain and causing inflammation, why don't we pay for the things that we now know work? Now, work doesn't mean cure. Healing does not mean curing. Healing is different than cure. We in our American thinking, we want cure. Walk for the cure. Run for the cure. Donate for the cure. I think we need to get our American medical system turned around to pay for what works whether someone can make a billion dollars on it or not. No one's going to make a billion dollars or a hundred billion dollars on dementia. And I think, I hate to say it, but I think that's why progress has been so slow. As we go through each talk, I'm going to ask my colleagues here to stop me or um, tell me it's time to move on or um, so I'm just not a talking head. And I lost my watch in Florida, so I'm going to uh, <laughs> use my, uh, my wedding watch, too. So, um, so I'm going to use my phone if that's OK. I'm not checking my email or anything, just so you know. It's my clock. So um, we're going to leave about 10 minutes. And uh, who's got the t uh, yeah, they're going to give me the, the, the umbrella jerk uh, if uh, it's getting late in the talk. And we'll ask for questions with about 10 minutes to go for each session. But please write your questions down. If you just hold them up, one of our uh, folks will come and pick them up at the table. Uh, and those of you online, we appreciate your presence. And please send your questions in online on the chat box. And we'll do our best. Tammy Linnae is going to uh, write those down and bring them over to our panelists here. And so that's kind of the format we'd like to do. So um, dementia care as it's practiced in the United States isn't what we think it should be. We don't want to replace that. We want to add ourselves on top of what's already being done. Because when a neurologist evaluates you and proves that you don't have any of the other many dozen conditions that we might miss, that's very valuable. We, we need our standard uh, dementia system to help us be sure that we're not missing something like that. So we would like to just add to what's already being done. But what we do takes about five or six hours on average for each client. And your doctor just doesn't have five or six hours. They get 20 minutes. The insurance company gives them 20 minutes. Now, some like Dr. Tackle and Jane would take way more than 20 minutes, but it sort of came out of their hide one way or another if they did that. The system isn't set up for five or six hours. So our idea is to collaborate and collaborate with the primary care uh, physician, uh, nurse practitioner, uh, physician assistant, whoever. We use the word clinician. So if you see us using the word clinician, we recognize that more and more in the future, it won't be a physician. We use the word clinician, just so you know. But our standard uh, care is like this. You get a, a mom has got dementia, the doctor says, and the family gathers together. They call each other. They gather together in the parking lot, sobbing and hugging each other. And no one gives them any direction, like, where do I do next? Where do I go from here? That's just the way it is. We give you the news, and off you go. Or worse yet, um, you have dementia. There's nothing we can do. Come back in a year. Or even worse. Um, you're not bad enough for medication. Why don't you come back in a year, and if you're worse enough, we'll give you medication. So that's what we currently do. But the family feels helpless and doesn't have any direction. But what if you could do it different? What if you could do it in a more collaborative way? Not, in fact, in fact, leaving the primary care clinician in charge, but we just have a system that 
can be added to what the primary care clinician does. We support them. You know, the Alzheimer's uh, disease group, they do an annual report, and their annual report is a very comprehensive assessment of dementia care in the United States. What they've said the last two or three reports is family doctors are not comfortable doing dementia care. So we want to work against that. We want to make them comfortable. When I talk to my neurology colleagues who do dementia care, they say there's no way we can do all the dementia. We just can't. There aren't enough of us. When we started, it took five months, maybe six months, to get in to see a neurologist. Well, I'm sad to report it still takes five or six months. We've tried and tried and tried. We've lost a couple. Um, neurology is struggling, I think, for a variety of reasons why they're having trouble recruiting. Um, but we still need the specialist involved in the system. We still need the primary care person to take charge. We want to just collaborate with them, superimpose what we're doing on a primary care clinician who feels empowered. And we hope they'll fe feel empowered if we get out of the office and teach them more. So far in our Dementia Resource Center clinic, we've been so busy <laughs> that we haven't done enough of that. And we'd like to do more of that. And in fact, we're looking to maybe hire additional clinical personnel so that I can get out and do more advocacy work and pound on the desk of the legislators to make sure that we get a system that pays for the kind of care we really need. Not the $56,000 a year intravenous drug that makes somebody $100 billion. Hi, Tammy Kobinger here from the Central Minnesota Dementia Community Action Network and the Dementia Resource Center Clinic in St. Cloud. I'm here today to talk to you about personalized dementia care. We've seen too many families receive a diagnosis of dementia and hear, there's nothing we can do, come back in a year. A loved one receives a dementia diagnosis, but the family and patients receive no direction on what to do next or suggestions for dementia-related services available. Families and patients feel helpless and struggle to find hope. We believe that collaborating with a patient, their family, and their dementia clinician can slow and even halt the progression of dementia symptoms leading to more life to live. How do we do that? It's a step-by-step -step process at the Dementia Resource Center Clinic. We start with a thorough dementia risk assessment and evaluation, then formulate a diagnosis and a management plan. A patient's referring primary care and specialty clinicians remain in charge of their care. But we partner with them to provide a more thorough and successful management plan. We provide personalized recommendations for diet, exercise, sleep, relaxation, social connections, health habits, and therapeuticals to slow and even halt the progression of dementia symptoms. We provide patients with regular follow-ups and we provide caregivers and families with educational sessions, support services, and prevention strategies to partner in their loved one's progress. Hi, I'm Christina with the Dementia Resource Center Clinic in St. Cloud. I want to tell you a little bit about our dementia caregiver support group that we offer every month. We have five locations throughout central Minnesota. The third Tuesday of every month, we meet in St. Cloud at 10 a.m. The fourth Tuesday of every month, we're in Staples, Minnesota at 9 a.m., Wadena, Minnesota at 11 a.m., and the fourth Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m., we're in Long Prairie, Minnesota. Our fifth option for support groups is going to be the fourth Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. in Becker, Minnesota. We would love to have you join us at any of these support groups. If you have any questions or want to find out more information about our support groups or about other services that we provide at the Dementia Resource Center Clinic, please visit our website at www.dcan-mn.org. Hi, this is Christina from the Dementia Resource Center Clinic. I wanted to take a little time to share some information about the caregiving coaching services that we offer. You can receive personalized one-on-one -on -one caregiver coaching to equip yourself with the knowledge, skills, and tools to care for yourself and your loved one living with dementia. 
Our goal is to enrich the role of a caregiver and equip them to become a stronger caregiver capable of self-directed care. You will gain tools to assist you in the caregiving role, such as education for dementia risk factor improvement, setting reasonable, realistic, and attainable goals, developing effective coping skills, setting realistic boundaries, identifying areas in which the caregiver could use additional help, providing additional resources, affirming the caregiver's strengths and accomplishments, reducing caregiver stress by developing coping strategies, and assistance in problem solving. Hi, my name is Kay. I've been a volunteer with uh, DCAN for approximately six months. Uh, I'm, I'm here to speak to you about the Dementia Informed Counseling. It's a new service that will be coming on board shortly. And what it does is, is it gives you an avenue for hope and insight and um, to the life of the couple or the family. Dementia is a, a disease and like many diseases, it upsets the apple cart. There are many emotions that go into dealing with any kind of illness, but dementia especially is difficult. It, it can help get the relationship back on track with new understanding and a little uh, professional guidance. Each counseling session will help the person living with dementia, the caregiver, and or the family member. They'll hopefully reconnect with different viewpoints, but with the same amount of love as before the dementia. Counselors will take a positive and constructive approach in identifying solutions and give, hopefully, a, a doable and beneficial outcome for everyone involved. Thank you.